Well, hey guys, about time to put up a video. It's been two and a half weeks or so since I did the last one. But I have a few amps to build. And today we're going to look at a LM1875 monoblock. And I'm going to build one because I have problems getting measurements off this little, uh, when I build them up on these little uh, socket boards because of the resistance here and it causes distortion if you don't have good grounds. Sometimes wiggling components makes the distortion change. So I think it'll work a lot better soldered up. And here's the components. And I'll just use one of these boards from Radio Shack. You can get these little square boards. Don't need a lot of room at all. You know, here this is the whole circuit really doesn't take up much room at all and of course you'll need a heat sink and you, yeah you do need one that's fairly large now, this isn't too bad but now if you're gonna push this thing uh, 25 watts of output you need uh, two of these if it's gonna be stereo or one per chip because you need to dissipate that heat so a nice um, heat sink with large fins will do the trick. Okay, here is the circuit layout. A little bit different from the uh, the data sheet. Uh, some of the values are different. I'm using uh, 20k uh, metal film resistors because I had them. And I'm using a higher gain, so in the feedback divider here, I'm using 470. That will allow me to use a headphone player because the output is not quite as high as line level and you have to turn those things all the way up and if your song wasn't uh, recorded loud enough it's even all the way up full blast it's, you know the amplifier is you know still not putting out that much power because you know the gain is not high enough so I, I chose a, a 20K and a 470 in the feedback divider network. Now if you are going to use it with line level sources, you should just use the data sheet value. And uh, whatever value they had, 680 or 860, I forget. The components in blue are optional. Now these capacitors are across the power supply leads. It's a split supply amplifier so you have a plus voltage and negative supply voltage going in. And if the main filter capacitors are more than uh, about 10 centimeters, uh, that'd be right about four or so inches, whatever. You know, if it's far, too far from the chip itself, you really should add the electrolytics across the uh, supply rails. I often don't do those and I don't really notice a problem but uh, just for good design you might want to. And per chip use 220 on each rail. That should be 220 as well. Now if you combine the two amplifiers on one board you can use 470 or 330s will work. Just use a nice quality electrolytic like a Panasonic type, a low series resistant type, or a low ESR type uh, capacitor. And this is just a volume potentiometer. You, know, you don't have to have it if you don't want it in there. So really that's about it for the optional components. And notice uh, I am using a star ground and be sure to twist the actual wire leads of your output power supply and your input so it doesn't pick up noise and um, let's see here oh yeah I also added this it's not optional I don't consider this optional but they usually don't put them on the data sheets I put a uh, a small value this is a 330 Pico farad capacitor across the input. What that does when there's nothing connected it shunts high frequencies down and some people might say where's the 
series resistor that goes with it to make a proper filter. Well, I don't think you really need it if, because in my case, I'm just uh, getting rid of uh, high frequencies that are picked up from the output when there's nothing plugged in. So that's why I'm doing that. If you want to have the like add like a 1K resistor or a 2.2K or something like that, sure, go ahead. Uh, let's see, what else here? Talked about the heat sink. I'm using a 1 microfarad coupling capacitor for the input. If you really want the frequency response to go way down, you can use a higher value, but in my experience, this was plenty. You get good deep bass with that. And uh, I guess that's about it. Let's take a look at the layout. Well, if you had a sharp eye, you noticed I had that drawn in backwards. The positive side of that capacitor, this optional capacitor, goes towards the ground because it's on the negative rail. So I corrected that and that value on this schematic. Now, here is the layout. Now you can etch your own board or use these. The wiring is very simple with these chips. And here's the star ground. Now if you have to add those optional power supply capacitors, you can use heavy traces and bring it around over here and then just star ground your, your two capacitors over here. And uh, not really much to say. This is just the top side of the board looking down. And um, so you're kind of seeing a see-through layout with the leads going over to the pins. That's the uh, that's an upright resistor, and it goes the top lead goes over to this point. If that if you were confused by that, this is the parts bill of material here. I think I have everything. And um, in mine, I'm instead of using a film capacitor on the input, I'm just going to use electrolytic. This is not going to be a listening serious. Uh, listening amplifier or anything like that and it's a pretty I think it's a pretty good layout you should get the most of the 1875 make sure you get an authentic one not the crap off of eBay get it from mouse or digikey whatever and uh, yeah, it's a great little chip low distortion across the uh, frequency band and power band so you can get uh, 4 or 8 ohm loads, you can get under 0.1% distortion, which is, uh, to me, I consider that hi-fi quality. So, Well, enough yakking. I'm going to uh, throw this thing together here. Okay, I have the components laid out on the board. And uh, I did move that capacitor on the right up a little bit. And you can shift things around it. There's some room to do it. But look at that. Probably used one quarter of the board. A lot less room than even an LM386 little bitty amplifier. So doesn't take much room at all. Okay, all complete. Got this heat sink out of an old TV as well as the wire. So yeah, I kind of salvage parts out of old devices that I can get my hands on. And I braced the board up here. One thing that drives me crazy is people will build an amplifier, put it in a case, and they'll leave the board flopping around. The only thing supporting it is the pins of the IC. And if you move it around, you know, vibration will eventually you know, break off the pin. So I sh um, put the bracket on here and shored this thing up so it's nice and solid, doesn't move. Very simple, basic. Well, enough yakking. Let's see if the thing actually works. 
Okay, it's kind of tight back here. But I got the uh, amp hooked up to the power supply. Set for uh, dual supply mode. And uh, hooked up audio source. let that go too long and put like breaks in between it so I don't get that uh, matched content notice well the supply limits it to an amp so uh, if I had a problem with a connection here I, I would find out by monitoring the current channels and it's not really drawing anything but I noticed playing music it was pulling my voltage down so I'm exceeding the current limit playing voltage or uh, playing music into this 4 ohm speaker but uh, seems to be working well and I think I said before this is not going into any sort of case it's just kind of uh, something to mess around on the bench with I'll be building an amplifier a stereo amplifier uh, in another video hopefully by the time the year's out but I'm sure this video is getting long now so I'll end it here thanks for watching